Good morning. I have a huge topic today, one that is so important. It is so important. If you have not heard about this hidden health hazard, uh, you need to listen up because it was eye-opening for me. Um, this is a big topic. And I'll be honest with you guys, this topic is a biochemistry heavy topic. And because of that, I wanna take my time and I wanna explain it to you appropriately. So this live today is gonna take some time. Um, so if you're in a run today, you're running around today, that's fine, you gotta ditch out, that's cool. But come back and watch this entire live later because I'm telling you, you are going to want to know this information, okay? Um, and I wanna explain it to you, I want you to understand it. I think this is probably one of the most misunderstood genetic mutations that affects more than 40% of the population. Doctors can't take the time to explain it to you, they simply don't have the time. So I'm going to sit here and talk to you about it today. And for those of you that are familiar with this mutation, you're going to understand the frustration, right? That people don't learn about this. Okay. So hello. Good morning. Hey, Carrie. So I'm going to be talking about the MTHFR mutation today. Have you guys heard of this? So this is a big one. I'm telling you, this is really big for your health and you need to know whether or not you have this, okay? Or treat it as if you do. Uh, for those of you that are new here, I know I'm jumping in right away. I normally give you a little introduction, but I'm telling you, this is gonna take me a while. Like this is gonna be a long live, but I'm hoping that you will be entertained, captured. This will prompt a lot of questions for you to ask your doctor and hopefully give you some solutions for what you've been struggling with, okay? So I am Dr. Trisha Pingle. This is your morning checkup. I believe it's Tuesday, last time I checked, in the middle of October. Um, so let's dive in. Is that cool? Um, I know a lot of you are still joining. Sorry, this is gonna be a long one, okay? So I see some thumbs up, so good morning. So let's dive in. Um, I am very passionate about this subject, okay? So I'm gonna, I call it that too, Lynn Marie. So I'm gonna be up, uh, I'm gonna be hyper today because I just am so passionate about this subject and educating on this subject, okay? So I am gonna talk to, you, uh, talk to you about MTHFR, which in medical school I came up with a great little, um, very uh, rude algorithm. But yes, uh, Lynn Marie threw it out there, the mother effer gene, absolutely. Um, so when I was in medical school, you know, we learned about this genetic mutation um, and how it affects an enzyme that's involved with a lot of our metabolic activities, okay? I mean, it's involved in detoxification, to energy production, to much more. And this enzyme, its full name, and it's a tongue twister, especially in the morning without enough coffee, is methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, otherwise known as MTHFR, okay? In many people, there's a genetic mutation in this enzyme, Okay, now at that time, when I was in med school, all I thought about is ways to remember it for my board exams, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't take it um, so directly for me or I hadn't had a personal um, a relationship with this enzyme at that time. Um, but um, I remembered it for the board exams, I got through my board exams and I knew it had something to do with folate. And that was kind of about at the point that I remember. Now, fast forward years later, Okay, genetic testing, this was what, about five years ago or so? Genetic testing became all the rage, you know? Swipe your cheek, find out your genetics, your, your um, you know, where you came from, all of that type of thing. So I sent my kit to analyze my genetics. And what surprised me is that I had both variants of this MTHFR mutation. Okay, there are two different variants of this gene that can be mutated. One is called C677T, and one is called A1298C, okay? And they each impact uh, methylation in different ways. And don't worry, I'm gonna talk to you about methylation, what methylation is. We're gonna get into it. I promise you, I will tell you what this does, okay? But um, they basically are involved in different areas of your metabolism and methylating different parts of your body. So when I looked at the results, I thought, how could I have this? I mean, from what I remember from med school, you know, I would have symptoms. I would be depressed. I would have high blood pressure because we learned it kind of like the all or none. Like, you know, if disease is on a progression, right? And you have uh, health here and you have disease here. You know, so often in medicine, we don't diagnose until you're here. 
right? But there's this whole process along the way where you may have mild symptoms or occasional symptoms or symptoms that may look somewhat normal and you're not diagnosed with anything, right? So I was thinking to myself, well, I don't have all the major problems of MTHFR and I have both mutations. This is impossible. Like, how could this be? So I went back to my medical books. I went back to my old lectures. I went back to researching it and trying to remind myself what this was involved in. And it's interesting because as I poured over all these details, I started to realize that my dad probably had this mutation. He had a heart attack at 40 um, and he died by stroke at 58. Now he was a smoker. Smoker and MTHFR do not go well together. Okay, so I keep thinking, you know, if we could have genetic tested him way back in the day, could we have saved his life? It's quite possible because this, this mutation, if you have it, there's a workaround, okay? It does sound like a swear word, Lori. That's how I remember it. So as I reviewed my health history, you know, I started to realize that perhaps part of the reason why I really didn't have a lot of symptoms is that I've been primarily vegetarian for the majority of my life. I became vegetarian when I was 13. Um, and so... Um, and so by focusing a lot on plant-based foods, you get a lot of methylated folate in your diet. So I had may actually have down-regulated a lot of the symptoms that could come from it. However, I had always had issues with my hormones. I had always stored estrogen, which is a major symptom of it, right? I'd had menstrual cycle issues. Um, and so my dad's side of the family also had severe depression, bipolar, suicide, you know, so my family line did show signs, but no one really noticed. You know, no one really thought about it because it was so under uh, recognized at the time. <clears throat> okay, this was a huge wake up call for me. It was a huge wake up call for my health. Oh my gosh, what am I missing? What can I do to better my health um, by taking my genetics into play? Okay, um, <clears throat> the I had a question. I do have an article on this, which is going to help you all um, at drpingle.com if you type in MTHFR. But the two variants are C677T and A1298C. Okay? <clears throat> all right. So since then, so much has come to be recognized about this mutation and its effect on the MTH, effect on health, mood, hormones, toxin removal, okay? And now I'm seeing patients come to me saying, I have this mutation, nobody will explain it to me, what is it, why do I care? And that is why I'm here today, is to tell you guys this, because the education out there sucks. For any of you that have this mutation, I feel you. I had to go to my medical books and thank goodness that I had the training in that to understand what all this meant. I don't think most people can really understand it and that's why I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what methylation is, how this impacts every area of your body and the five diseases um, that honestly are probably the most prevalent in the US and how they're impacted by methylation and how they're worsened by this mutation. Okay, um, And also what you can do to uh, help. And it's easy. Cool? See, my, my fighter mug today was fitting. All right. I'm not going to lie. This is a very complicated biochemical process. It's filled with tiny details of vitamins, amino acids, chemistry terms, complex biochemical pathways. I'm going to try not to use too many big words. And for you doctors out there that follow along, hopefully I can, uh, I know you guys like more details, but I like, I, I gotta make this simple for everybody to understand. So I'm gonna have to just use my metaphors the best I can to explain it. Um, and I will come back and answer questions at the end. I'm not gonna interrupt too much in between because it's so complicated, okay? Um, so um, I just want you to know, approximately 40% of Americans know that they have this mutation. And there are many more that don't know they have it. 40 percent of Americans have it. Okay, so 40 percent of people out there, relatively, almost half of you likely have some sort of problem in this particular gene. Now, it's interesting, when I went back and looked at the history of it, and I, I don't have a lot of the details, but what was interesting is they were suspecting that maybe it was an adaptation to avoid malaria. 
which is interesting because it impacts B vitamins and such. Um, so there's actually a reason, you know, anytime we have a genetic mutation, it's usually a natural adaptation. You know, it's a natural selection adaptation, which is interesting. Um, but there's a lot of links they're suspecting maybe it was an adaptation to malaria. Um, so hopefully that means I won't get malaria, but we'll see. Anyway, um, kind of cool. I always find those types of things cool. You know, we can beat ourselves up about a genetic problem. You know, we find out we have a genetic disease and we go, oh man. But you could also look at it as, okay, there's a reason it happened. It, it, it adapted at some point for my survival. So you could always look at it from different aspects, you know, and just figure out how to work around it, okay? But if 40% of you know you have it, right? And likely more of you have it, then we need to talk about it, right? So what is methylation? Let's start with that. So this subject is chemistry heavy, but I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible, okay? MTHFR is an enzyme, and it's involved in the methylation of folic acid. So what does that mean? Methylation is a biochemical process where basically you add a methyl group to another um, compound. And a methyl group is simply a carbon and three hydrogens. So you'll have a substance in the body, it will add a methyl group, and that's in order for a reaction to move forward. So it's kind of like a um, Rube Goldberg machine, right? Where, <clears throat> you know, uh, the ball rolls and, you know, knocks over the dominoes and the dominoes knock over the egg and the egg rolls down and, you know, that type of thing. Rube Goldberg. You guys know what that is? So that's very much what this is about. That methylation is very important. It just puts, almost like a machine, puts the methyl group on that substance to keep it moving forward. Okay? So that's what methylation is. And it happens all over our body. Okay? In numerous processes. Okay? Um, and it's either to create something else or break something else down. Okay? So our body relies on this methylation process. Um, anything from break debt production and breakdown of hormones, toxin removal, regulating bodily processes such as blood pressure, your mood, without efficient methylations, these reactions back up. They can't occur at an efficient rate. So if you could imagine like the start off of that Rube Goldberg gets backed up. Let's say you start with a bunch of tennis balls that start it and you get more and more tennis balls. So the reactions go slower. They still happen, but it doesn't happen as, as efficient of a rate. So what happens is things back up in the body and it causes problems in other areas. And these are where those symptoms develop, okay? And this is also why the symptoms are vast, why it's not just one symptom associated with this um, deficiency, because it, it can impact multiple areas of your body, and then depending on your nutrition, other genetic factors, what predisposing factors do you have to other disease, it chooses which ones are gonna be more impacted than the other. So often, by the time I see somebody with this mutation, they have symptoms all over the place, and they just can't figure it out, and nobody can figure it out, okay? <clears throat> Fred, you do. You don't know. I think anytime you talk about methylation, we're gonna get into the importance of methylation and why that helps clear toxins and prevent disease in general. So even people without MTHFR still need to learn what methylation is about and provide your body with the tools it needs to methylate. If you don't methylate, you get sick, bottom line. And for those that have the mutation or one set of the mutation, um, they're gonna be slower at that, okay? For example, I'm gonna actually talk about that in a second, what other processes impact methylation besides this enzyme. So give me a moment. Um, so um, <clears throat> uh, what's really cool, here's a cool fact about the biochemistry in your body, our amazing body, is that we self-donate methyl groups to other reactions. So we make what's called a methyl donor in our body that can give a methyl to somebody else. The primary one is called SAM-E. Have you guys heard of that? A lot of people who are on antidepressants um, or anti-anxiety or have tried to do natural therapies for mood have heard of SAM-E um, and methionine. It's, it's, it's essentially a, 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 it's a methionine, which is an amino acid, okay? So you find this in foods. But here's the problem. In order for SAMe to donate its methyl group to serotonin, to make more serotonin, or to glutathione, which is one of our primary antioxidants in the body, it has to be activated. Do you wanna know what activates it? Methylated folate. So if you don't have that enzyme to convert folic acid to methylated folate, you're going to see problems in those pathways. Okay, SAMe is not gonna be able to do its job. So that's a very common example for those of you that have, have, di have 
played with naturopathic medicine, you may have heard of that one. But <clears throat> folate is essential for growth and development. Anyone who's been pregnant knows, eat your folic acid, take your folic acid. I'm gonna come back why that's a problem if you have this mutation, okay? Um, <clears throat> Let me just say that methylfolate begins this process. And if you don't begin this process, SAMI can't donate to other groups to be able to continue those processes. So you end up with more toxins in the body. You end up with um, hormone storage or hormone dysregulation, mood changes, and other nutritional deficiencies simply because it can't do its normal job. But that's kind of cool, isn't it? So I remember when I was pregnant, everyone kept saying, you need to take folic acid. Now at that time, I didn't know I had this mutation, um, but being primarily vegetarian and taking really high quality supplements at the time from the naturopathic world, I was already taking a methylated folate. Uh, folic acid, you start with folic acid and then it converts into methylated folate via this enzyme. So what will happen if you don't have efficient conversion is you'll get a backup of folic acid, all those little tennis balls in the Rube Goldberg machine and you won't be able to move forward. Um, so what happens, a lot of people, you see this infertility all the time, uh, they miscarry over and over again. Um, and they're like, the doctor's like, well, you're taking folic acid, you're taking all your vitamins, I don't understand, but they're not converting it. So the baby can't develop, right? Um, or they'll have more neural tube defects. So if you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant, methylated folate is really important, not folic acid. Folic acid, we don't have a deficiency in folic acid, people. It's fortified in everything. It's in our bread, it's in our cereal, it's in our milk, for God's sakes, probably. I mean, it's everywhere. They fortify folic acid into any grain. I can guarantee you of that. So folic acid is not the deficiency. The deficiency is the methylated folate, your ability to use that folic acid. Does that make sense? Okay, so 40% um, so of Americans have this mutation, probably more, okay? So um, I don't wanna to go too much into the weeds, give me a second. Okay, if your body isn't methylated appropriately, and this could be due to the mutation or due to any other condition, and I'm gonna give you a few examples, what will happen is you will not produce your important antioxidants. Now I sit here every day and talk about antioxidants and how important antioxidants are for health, diabetes, cardiovascular, pain, immune system, cytokine production, I saw um, a question on that. All of these things that keep us healthy require methylation, okay? We can't get through it without it, okay? Very important. Glutathione is essential for making DNA, okay? It supports your immune infection, keeps you free of invading colds and flus, protects you against cancer. It's involved in recycling vitamin C and vitamin E. It helps enzymes do their job. It protects and repairs your brain cells, okay? And guess what? It requires methylation. If you're not methylating, you're not making antioxidants to the level that you need to make them. Okay, methylation is also key in neurotransmitters, okay? Um, epinephrine, serotonin, melatonin. If you're not sleeping, you have a history of anxiety, depression, your family has issues of that, methylation might be an issue, okay? Um, and that's not it. It's also involved in your eye health, it's involved in your fat metabol metabolism, it's involved in your detoxification processes, okay? So if you don't have proper methylation, you will see disease, ultimately, at some point. The cleaner the diet, the more you take things or make up for that lack of methylation, the less severe the impact will be. Now, back to Fred's question, you still with me, Fred? <laughs> um, in addition to the MTHFR mutation, there's other things that can actually impact methylation. And you see this because they're risk factors for all these other diseases, right? Um, toxin exposure, pollution, heavy metals, nicotine, smoking's a huge one. How many diseases are increased in risk if you're a smoker? A lot of them. Why? Okay. My dad was a smoker, and I believe he also had the MTHFR mutation. So if I would have known that, you know, I couldn't get him to quit. <laughs> but if I could at least given him some methylated vitamins, could I have prolonged his life or saved his life? You know, I'd really like to think that I could have. I do realize that um, acceptance is really important and that the order of the world just happens. That means you can't, you can't prevent death if it's meant to happen. But, you know, 
I still wonder, could I have done something if we would have had a little more education on this? Would the life, would life have gone a different direction? I don't know, right? Um, also, inflammation. If you have a condition that's highly inflammatory, you already have diabetes, you have autoimmune conditions, you have a poor diet that's leading to increased inflammation, those types of things will also impact methylation. Um, poor nutrition. If you're eating the standard American diet, you have trouble with methylation, okay? I have a comment here. Methylation, very important for multiple sclerosis. Yes, it's important for us staying well. If we don't methylate, we aren't well. Uh, so any chronic disease, people ask me all the time, what do I do about vertigo? What do I do about multiple sclerosis? What do I do? And all these random genetic disorders, check the methylation because you're always going to be helped by supporting your methylation always because it helps move that reaction through. Right? Okay. Did that answer your question, Fred? Or did I lose you? You guys with me? I see a ton of questions. It's hard on Instagram to answer them all. I'll do my best uh, to come back. It can manifest as anything, Andrea. Um, I don't see it so much with lymphatic disorders, although if you're really backed up and toxic, yeah, it would slow your lymph, right? Um, all right, so let's talk about the diseases linked in research to this mutation or to problems with methylation in general, okay? Um, all right, so number one, one of our, these are all the top diseases in our country, uh, for sure, uh, type two diabetes. So here's the thing about it. Not only does it predispose you to poor methylation, but poor methylation also predisposes you to it. Whew, right? All right, turns out that having an MTHFR mutation could not only put you at a greater risk of developing type two diabetes, but it may also increase your risk of developing di diabetes related complications. There was a study of more than 200 people that had di type two diabetes um, and more than 300 people without diabetes. Okay. And they found that those with the MTHFR mutation were more than twice as likely to have diabetes, twice as likely to have diabetes. So you know what, people come to me all the time, well, did diabetes runs in my family? Oh yeah, this is genetic. Look, unless you have a, an actual gene for diabetes, like a type one diabetes, type two diabetes, I don't find a lot of direct genes for it. I know they're out there, but I'm saying it might not be a diabetes gene, it might be a methylation gene, that's the problem. And that would cause more complications from your diabetes, more incidence of stroke, more incidence of diabetic neuropathy. In fact, another study revealed that type 2 diabetes patients with this mutation are at increased risk of experiencing diabetic rep retinopathy in the eyes. And this is due to uh, methylation on a substance called homocysteine. So if you go to the doctor and you're like, hey, I wanna see if maybe methylation might be impacted. It's not a shoe in okay? Because sometimes your levels can be normal, but homocysteine is something you can screen in the blood. Actually, I believe it's in the plasma, um, but you just take it with a regular blood test. Um, and if those levels start to go up, it indicates there might be some methylation issues. Um, in fact, one of the genes is highly tied to high homocysteine. Here's the problem with high homocysteine. It causes more cardiovascular concerns, high blood pressure, right? Um, uh, uh, plaque formation, you know, heart attack, stroke, inflammation. So you should know what your homocysteine levels are anyway. I track mine in general. Um, luckily, mine have always been low. I suspect my dad's were probably pretty high because he had both a heart attack. I mean, at 40 to have a heart attack, I'm 44. I can't imagine having a heart attack at 40. You know, my kids were so little, you know, um, but to have a heart attack at 40 and die at 58 of a stroke, um, his inflammation levels had to be high. But at that time, they didn't screen for this type of thing. Okay, so do check your homocysteine levels. Watch those. Okay, there's a linked high homocysteine levels are linked to a ton of disease, more so than diabetes and cardiovascular. Okay, um, but researchers noted that in these people, when they consumed a high methylated folate diet, their homocysteine levels would decrease and it would prevent the onset of diabet diabetic retinopathy. Okay? Folate foods matter. What, what are the folate foods? I know you're gonna ask, I'm coming to it, I promise. We're gonna go through this, I'm just gonna beat it over the horse, beat the horse first about 
eating plants and then we'll get to what plants do that. Um, anxiety and depression. Um, now this one may shock you, but I would say hands down, this is probably the most common presentation I see of the MTHFR mutation and mistreated. Uh, people are automatically put on meds. They never quite get it regulated. Um, and the problem is, is those medications need methylation in order to metabolize correctly. So what happens is you end up usually with high blood pressure, some sort of cardiovascular concern or other issues, storage of hormone, a lot of hormone um, issues, high testosterone, high estrone, heavy menstrual cycles, or in men might go the opposite direction and drop testosterone. So methylation matters. Okay, so if you have this problem and you're taking a bunch of medication that require methylation, that's going to be a problem. So if you're being treated for anxiety, depression, or if you have a loved one being treated for that, check for this mutation. It may change your treatment slightly, okay? Um, but um, it's more common in those, depression is far more common in those with MTHFR mutation than not, okay? Um, in fact, depression and anxiety are the most common symptoms that I see. And the 2013 study on people suffering from depression revealed that those with the MTHFR mutation tended to have more severe symptoms. Now I've lost two family members on my dad's side to suicide, um, bipolar, manic depression, suicide. Um, and, uh, you know, this was, one was my grandfather. So you know, I don't think they looked at this at all. Another one was my uncle and I was a child at the time. So this was definitely not on the radar. Could we have helped them? Most likely, right? Um, when I find people that don't metabolize antidepressants well, or they have a hard time finding, um, finding a, a good antidepressant, check for this mutation. I'll tell you how to check for it in a second. I see that question. Number three, cardiovascular disease, leading cause of death in the world. Leading cause. We don't hear about it. We hear about everything else that's killing us, but we don't hear about cardiovascular disease. It is the leading cause of death in the world and it is highly impacted by this mutation. So if at least 40% of you have it, that means at least 40% of you are at likely risk of cardiovascular disease if you don't do something about it, right? How many people could we prevent a heart attack, a stroke, high blood pressure if we paid attention to this mutation? That is preventative medicine, guys. That is why I'm here. This is preventative medicine. Getting your annual checkup and your gyne exam are great, fine, quick lab work, whatever. But if you're not looking for things that long-term cause disease in the entire community, we're never gonna prevent anything. So look for this, okay? Studies have shown it is highly linked to the MTHFR mutation. A 2006 study showed that having this mutation puts you at greater risk of having a stroke. Another study revealed that having this mutation increases your risk of hypertension, so that's high blood pressure, by up to 87%, and your risk of cardiovascular disease in general up by 40%. I realize I'm getting hyper, but I lost my dad at a very young age to cardiovascular disease. It breaks my heart. He was vibrant, he, he was part of the community, he was not sick, okay? but. He had high blood pressure, he had high cholesterol, and he was a smoker. So what did the doctors do immediately? They said, well, you need to quit smoking, otherwise you're gonna die. And you know what? They were probably right. However, my grandpa, who just died in July, um, smoked from the time he was 13 years old till he died at 84. He didn't have this mutation. I checked, I checked for it, okay? Not saying that smoking didn't cause him major health issues. Trust me, it did. Do not smoke, folks. I see a comment on that too. Watch out, smokers. But if you have this mutation, it is going to happen whether you smoke or not, most likely if you're not paying attention to it. 87% increased high blood pressure with this mutation. 40% of cardiovascular disease. We can lower the risk of cardiovascular disease in our country if we pay attention to methylation. Did I beat my horse enough? <laughs> Chronic pain and fatigue. How many of you are tired and full of pain? How many in our country are pain? How many opioids are being prescribed for pain in our country right now? A ton. In a study with more than 400 participants, researchers found that those with the MTHFR mutation were more than twice as likely to suffer from migraines 
Migraines. How many of you have migraines? Twice as likely to su suffer from migraines. Why? Because it's backed up, right? So if you're trying to run a reaction, your Rube Goldberg is trying to move forward to, I don't know, I always think of the Goonies, like they, they drop the thing down and it opens the door, you know, with the truffle shuffle, right? You guys with me? kids of the 80s. Anyway, um, if, it, if the ball never rolled down to open the gate or it did it less likely, you're not going to get as much efficacy. So you end up more toxic. You end up with more pain, more inflammation. Okay. There was a question about cytokines and stuff. If you're not moving methylation through the body, you will have more infl inflammation. So more overreaction and inflammation. So cytokines are part of that as well. Okay. Um, Okay, more likely to have migraines. A 2018 study on 200 participants revealed that the MTHFR mutation uh, was linked to development of fibromyalgia, also to chronic fatigue syndrome. How many of you have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome? A lot. Those are also linked to a lot of um, viruses. Okay, so a lot of viruses are linked to fibromyalgia and to chronic fatigue syndrome. Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, other types of... Um, Herpes, basically herpes viruses are linked to that. Why? Right? Our immune system, we maybe don't have as much antioxidants. Maybe our bodies are impacted more by those viruses. Think about the long-term impact if you're not methylating well to your immune system. So I often wonder, you know, people say, well, if you treat uh, the virus, you lower the chronic fatigue syndrome. I do see that, but sometimes I run into a hiccup because they have this mutation. And the reason why the virus took the problem was because of the mutation, not necessarily because of the virus. So you could kill the virus off, but you still have some symptoms. So also treat the methylation. Doing those together, you can get better success. Makes sense, right? You got to treat the whole person. Okay, so there was also another study that showed that having this mutation is associated with increased stiffness, like from rheumatoid conditions, and dry eyes. Okay? Andrea, I love your question. Since cytokine storm is prevalent in COVID deaths, could those patients' victims be more inclined to have this mutation? I actually think it's the opposite. I'm waiting for a study on this. I think because they've seen impact of anti-malaria drugs on COVID in some respect, not in everybody, okay, but I'm not saying what to take. I'm wondering if those with this mutation might actually do better. I don't know though, but that was the first thing I said when they started talking about malaria drugs, anti-malaria drugs, and those causing a problem. I said, the first thing I said to my husband was, hmm, I wonder what happens with folate. Um, and we don't know. We don't know at all. Um, I don't think they've drawn any association. I don't think they're looking. Um, I think they should. I absolutely think they should. Now, if you have somebody with this mutation and diabetes, though, you might not get real clear data, right? Because the inflammation from the diabetes um, could just be compounded by it, where if you have someone who's healthy and doesn't have any underlying conditions and has the mutation, they may not have that cytokine storm. But when you have someone who's already inflamed, does that make sense, with other comorbidity, comorbidities, you've got that problem. But I would love to see research on that. And I asked the exact same question. So thank you for the analytical thought. I love it. Um, I hope not because I have the mutation, but I take activated folate. So I don't know that I would really be impacted anyway, you know? Um, so uh, lastly, cancers. And then I'm gonna tell you how to test it. And then I'm gonna let you go because I know this is a long one, but it's interesting, yeah? So certain cancers, uh, we've heard about predispositions, right? The BRCA gene, you know, the breast cancer gene, you know, um, all these other cancer genes that we screen for, for ovarian cancer, for pancreatic cancer, all these things. Well, guess what? The MTHFR mutation can also increase your risk of certain cancers. Okay, there was a 2017 study that found that this mutation was associated with increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Also skin, lung, thyroid, and leukemia. Now, I would like to venture to say that I don't know if it's the mutation, similar to the, the conversation we just had about would COVID be impacted. I'm not sure it's the mutation itself. I think it's the side effect of the mutation. So for example, if you have this mutation and you're storing hormones because you can't detoxify them because you're not methylating, storage of hormones also predisposes you to certain hormone-related cancers. So my question is, is it really the mutation that causes the problem or is it the backup of methylation that causes the problem? And I'm gonna argue it's the backup of methylation that causes the problem, right? So if you bypass this problem by taking methylated folate every day and supporting your methylation processes with proper diet and supplementation, 
I would like to argue, and I don't have a study to back this up, that your risk would be lower. Does that make sense? Right? So it's not like a BRCA gene where it's like you have the gene, boom, you're probably going to get breast cancer. If you have this gene, you're more prone to any sort of disease because you can't go through your normal bodily processes in an efficient manner. So you have to fix that. That's the cool part about this gene is it's fairly easy to fix, right? I'm not going to go into a ton on stress today. I do have it written in the article how stress impacts MTHFR absolutely impacts MTHFR and methylation. If you're running from a bear, you're not going to be going through your normal detoxification and antioxidant processes at a normal rate, and then it's compounded by not being able to do it at a normal rate, okay? So also, with chronic stress, you run out of B vitamins, you run out of vitamin C, you run out of magnesium, right? So stress impacts everything. Just know, if you're under stress, back up, calm down, look at the whole picture, Okay, I'm going to run through some lists of common symptoms that I see with this um, condition, and then I'm going to tell you quickly how to test it, and I'm going to tell you some foods that you can eat and how, um, what I recommend as far as what to do about it, okay? Number one, most common things that I see with problems in methylation, okay? And this could be from the MTHFR gene, or it could be from other factors that are affecting methylation. So this applies to all of you, really. Fatigue, personal or family history of anxiety, depression, bipolar, cardiovascular disease, such as hypertension and stroke. Irritability, mood swings, cognitive issues like trouble focusing, history of inflammation-related conditions. That could be anything from autoimmune to um, asthma to, I mean, we could go on forever, anything with inflammation. Um, Hormone concerns, polycystic ovarian syndrome, estrogen dominance, that's like heavy periods, endometriosis, Um, infertility, commonly miscarrying. That's a big one. Um, You may also experience poor response to hormone replacement therapies because when you put the hormone in, your body can't metabolize it out. Okay, so birth control pill. I always ask people, did you ever take the birth control pill? Yep. How'd you feel on it? Like crap? Okay, we need to look at that pathway. <laughs> you know, um, now that's not a, it's not everything, but it's, it's usually a good indicator for me. Elevated homocysteine in lab work is a good indicator that there's a problem and it's probably more advanced. Okay, I don't see the homocysteine go up in the earlier stages. I see it in the later stages. So if you have a higher homocysteine, you need to look at your B vitamins and your methylation pathways. Uh, Systemic illness that develops from breast implants or other implantable devices. I will tell you, hands down, and I've worked with a uh, breast implant um, illness group. I will tell you the majority of them have this mutation, those that experience problems from their implants. Um, Almost all of them. Okay, Um, there is a huge movement in Arizona for plastic surgeons to check for this mutation before implanting breasts for this exact reason. There has been such a link between problems with methylation and any sort of implanted devices. So if you're planning to put something in your body, check for this first, okay? Because it's gonna be more likely to cause a reaction um, if it cannot um, metabolize back out, okay? Um, I already said headaches, migraines, sign of B vitamin deficiencies, pale skin, lightheadedness, numbness and tingling in body parts, muscle weakness, red blood cell changes, anemia, mouth sores, or you've just been told that your B12 is low and you're taking B12. Um, I'm not going to go into the intricacies between B12 and folate today, but there are a lot. B6, B12, and folate play with each other. And if one is high and one is low, you can actually worsen it by taking B12 by itself. Lots of problems there, okay? So how do you test it? It's easy. Genetic testing. Swab in the mouth. There you go. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention companies or not. I promise I am not affiliated, okay? I did mine personally through 23andMe. Um, There are many genetic testings that you can do and check this. Now, the thing is, you do have to take it to a doctor. I don't know if they'll tell you you have it um, through 23andMe. They used to. I don't know if they still do. Um, but you can get the raw data from that. If you've done this test in the past, look at the raw data. Look for those genes I mentioned. Check out drpingle.com. You can find those genes. Google it. MTHFR genes. MTHFR on 23andMe genetic raw data. Something You can find those genes and see if they're positive. Okay? Now... Here's what you can also do. If you don't wanna go through that process, I always treat everybody as if they have this mutation. 
right? So you have a choice to take, when you take B vitamins and you take folate, you have a choice. You can take it as folic acid or you can take it as methylated folate or MTH. It's often written as MTH folate. It's written as quadrifolic, but it's a methylated folate. Check your multivitamin, check your B vitamins. Your B vitamins should be methylated. Your B12 should be methylcobalamin, right? Your folate should be methylated folate, you want a methylated B vitamin. You can circumvent a lot of these problems. Now, foods, it's all those green foods that I uh, say to you every single day. Uh, let's see, broccoli, avocado, Brussels sprouts, kales, beets, mushrooms, spinach, lentils, right? Um, a lot of greens, a lot of greens. Work greens into everything, okay? Um, lots of water right? Lots of greens. You want to lower your intake of anything that can block a pathway, anything with additives, colors, dyes, artificial processing. You want to do a whole food diet that includes a lot of vegetables. Now, I'm not saying you have to be vegan, but I'm saying you need a lot of vegetables. I really do feel like that's what kept me from having massive impact um, and I was able to get pregnant and carry my pregnancies and I'm actually quite surprised, but it, I, when I look back at my diet, I go, well, of course, you know, um, so definitely a lot of greens, um, other nutrients that play a role in methylation. I do have listed in the article, uh, but methylcobalamin, which is B12, vitamin B6, very important, vitamin B2, magnesium, uh, betaine, vitamin D, these are all prevalent in methylation. A lot of the times, such as myself, I also take methionine, which is an amino acid um, that helps drive SAMe, helps that whole process. There's a lot of supplements out there formulated for people with this. But in general, make sure you're not just taking folic acid. You have plenty of folic acid people, right? For those of you that do not have the mutation but are doing things that impact methylation, high stress lifestyles, smoking, excessive drinking, you know, poor diets, not exercising, right? Those types of things need to be addressed as well. Okay? Um, Kelly, um, it depends on the type of folate. What does it say what type of folate it is, or does it just say folate? You gotta look at what kind of folate it is. Uh, dosages are anywhere typically from 400 micrograms up to like 3,000. I mean, I would say, um, you know, if you have, if you don't have any symptoms of this and you're taking a multivitamin that has the 400 micrograms of activated folate, you're probably okay. But if you have symptoms, you should speak to your doctor about using higher doses as well. Um, question, any kind of implants or specifically breast implants? You know what? Um, it's interesting. You're asking about silicone versus metal versus saline. In the breast implants illness group, it's both. I mean, it's silicone or saline. They're reacting to the, uh, I think, the, the capsule. Um, uh, and I have no doubt that a metal implant would cause a problem as well. I've seen IUDs cause problems with people with MTHFR where they swell around it, um, more so than other people. Um, but I also see that small portion of the population that has trouble with that, right? I, I mean, if I'm a naturopath, the people that are doing great on synthetic hormones aren't coming to me necessarily, right? They're, they're doing fine. So I see a large population of the small population, but, um, yeah, I would say any kind of implant because the body can't detoxify whatever that is out. Um, so you'd want to support. I have a question on SAMI supplement. Yeah, I, I think SAMI supplement is great, but you want to also make sure that you have the methylated folate or SAMI can't work. You can put a ton of SAMI in there. It's not going to work if it doesn't have all its cofactors. So as long as it's SAMI plus cofactors, um, I think it's great. Um, the biofilms, yeah, the biofilms are a huge issue. Um, huge issue. Um, <laughs> there, there are methyl tetrahydrofolate glucosamine for, yep, that's right. Methyl tetrahydrofolate. Yeah. Very good. And like I said, I do it in a B, I will tell you my B complex, the total B complex has methylated folate plus methylated B vitamins in a combination. Uh, so if you're looking for one, um, 
I wasn't going to put one out that wasn't methylated, right? So the total B complex does have methylated B vitamins, including methylated folate. Now, if you have this mutation and you're having a lot of issues, you might need an additional methylated folate on top of it. This is more indicated just for, um, you know, standard everyday supplementation. Uh, so you might need additional, but it's a great start. Okay. I'm trying to come up with a subscribe and save safe thing on my website. Some of the products have it. Um, I can only do every 30 days, and so this is a 60-day supply, so this one doesn't have it yet, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'll try to add it. I just don't want you guys to have too many, but um, I did on the probiotic and some of the other supplements did a subscribe and save. You can sign up, and you save 15%, and it'll automatically ship to you every month, so I'm going to work on that for the rest of these two because I know it's, sometimes it's hard to reorder supplements, but this is a good one if you're looking for one. Um, exactly, Lynn Marie. All right, um, I know I can go back on Facebook and answer questions easily, so let me just make sure I got some of these Instagrams before I log off because um, I think we talked about the cytokines, um, the variants I gave you, very important multiple sclerosis, lymphatic issues, yeah. How can you check for the mutation? Yep, saliva test. Also, even um, Sonora Quest and LabCorp does testing. Um, insurance doesn't always cover it. Now, if you've had miscarriages, it'll cover it, right? If you've had a history of severe depression or you have high homocysteine levels, it'll probably cover it. If you don't, it may not. So you may be better paying for a cash genetic test. Might be faster, easier, um, and uh, you know, that might be easier. My little sister had been dealing with breast cancer, yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay, I think I got through that. Yes, Kelly. Yeah, I thought you bought this one. Um, yeah, so the one in the methyl B is, uh, yeah, there's 400 micrograms that are from quadrifolic, okay, which is one form of it. And then the other 280 are from 5 meta tetrahydrofolic acid, right? So you're good. Yeah, Richard, auto ship. The biggest thing is a lot of mine are 60 day supplies and my website developer only allows 30 day auto refills. So I may have to move the site, we'll see. But for now, anything that's 30 day, the probiotic, the adrenals, um, the mineral, um, I have an auto ship option. Just bear with me and I'll try to figure it out. Um, you know, I can do it on the others. It's just, you're gonna have way too many. Now, if you share them with a spouse, that might be an option, you know, if it's a 60 day supply. So I may do them anyway, but um, just keep that in mind. Does lymphatic massage help with detoxing from, um, the lymphatic massage will move the lymph through, but you know, you can't change biochemistry in that respect from the lymphatic massage. You'd also wanna be taking the cofactors that help you detoxify out that lymph, okay? Great, I'm glad you ordered it. Thank you, Joanna, I really appreciate it. Uh, we had a little backup. I didn't realize it was a holiday yesterday, so I shipped out all these supplements over the weekend thinking, and I was like, oh man, <laughs> there was no mail yesterday. Oh, so I went to the mail store to ship them all out, and they were like, well, they won't go out till tomorrow. So for any of you that just ordered, sorry, I didn't realize there was a holiday. Um, have you done a talk on the genetic testing kits? No, you know, I can't really, it's hard because there's like rules on what I can affiliate with. I would love, by the way, if any of you do this type of testing, if you're in a business that does this type of testing, reach out to me. I would love to align with a kit that I could recommend. Um, and it just comes to a, 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 a collaboration, collaboration because I really feel that it's helpful to know if you have this. And if you don't, can't do it, test, just treat yourself as if you do, okay? You're not doomed, we're never doomed. You know, my dad, if I followed my dad's footsteps, I would be dead by now, right? So, I'm just gonna keep moving forward, right? Um, I bet she is just like me. I never thought about it till right now. Yeah, especially with miscarriage, people with infertility, definitely looking at the right form of folate matters. If you're loading yourself up with folic acid and you have this mutation, you're gonna be more likely to miscarry. Does that make sense? Because it's backed up. So I would definitely make sure anyone trying to get pregnant who is pregnant in general takes a methylated folate rather than a folic acid. I think that's very important. And most of the prenatals have folic acid, just FYI, so watch that very, very closely, okay? Um, someone, Beth is saying that Dr. Ben Lynch has a test. Yeah, there's tests all over the place for this, okay? Right, Andrea, exactly. Lots of rules and regulations. All right, I took 
a long time. I'm sorry. Although many of you hung on, I still see people out there. That's great. Thank you. For those of you that are watching this on replay, I hope you share it. Share it. Educate. If 40% of us have it, at least, that means most people are impacted. This is important preventative medicine information. I cannot stress that enough. We have to methylate. If we don't methylate, we get disease. Okay, so spread this, share it, comment. I will go through and answer comments on Facebook. I think I got all the ones on Instagram. Um, thank you to all of you. Please share. I'll be back tomorrow. I uh, won't be quite as quite as heavy um, of a topic, but um, I will be here tomorrow with something lighthearted and fun. I hope you guys <laughs> didn't mind me blabbing for an hour. You guys have a great day. This is Dr. Trisha Pingle, and uh, I'm going to sign off and go enjoy my Tuesday. Take care now. Bye-bye now.